People say fairy tales aren't real. But sometimes, happily ever after is for real. I've been thinking about this moment since I started reading romance novels. It's my very first date. Laura Jean Covey was living her real-life fairy tale with her boyfriend, Peter Kavinsky, and she couldn't be happier. Weeks after their relationship started, Laura Jean's high school initiated a volunteer program. Peter opted to volunteer with his friends while she decided to follow in her older sister Margot's footsteps by choosing Bellevue Retirement Home. Upon arriving at Bellevue for her first day, Laura Jean encountered Stormy, an eccentric elderly woman often mentioned by Margot, and discovered that John Ambrose McLaren also volunteered there. During their interaction, Laura Jean and John Ambrose discussed a love letter she had written to him years ago. He requested to read the letter before agreeing to return it to her. Why do you have to move away? Maybe someday we'll meet again, and you'll never know I felt any of this. But, I'll know. I'll always know that once upon a time, my heart was yours. Subsequently, Laura Jean found herself unable to shake off thoughts of their conversation. I didn't want to be thinking about what might have been if he'd gotten that letter in middle school instead of now. But I was. Additionally, she struggled with insecurities about her relationship with Peter, constantly comparing herself to her ex-best friend and his ex-girlfriend, Jen. When Peter and I got together, I didn't expect to feel so insecure about his past relationship with Jen, but for every first I was having with him, he'd already had his with her. On Valentine's Day, Laura Jean observed her classmates being serenaded by special a cappella groups. She learned that Peter had arranged for a group to serenade Jen during every period when they were still together, deepening her insecurities. Despite this, she momentarily forgot her worries when meeting Peter later that day. He gifted her a silver heart necklace and recited a poem. The moon never beams without bringing me dreams of beautiful Laura Jean. And stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of beautiful Laura Jean. No one has ever written me a poem before. Like, seriously, this is the most romantic thing ever. Laura Jean, however, discovered it was from an Edgar Allan Poe poem. The moon never beams without bringing me dreams of beautiful Laura Jean. And the stars never rise. But I feel the bright eyes of beautiful Annabelle Lee. How did you? Your young man has very good taste. I'll give him that. But I'm sorry to tell you that the author of that particular poem is Edgar Allan Poe. Peter apologized, expressing his desire to write something original for her and assuring her of his genuine feelings. I never said that I wrote it. I'm sorry. You were so happy when I read it to you that I wish that I had written it and that I could actually write something like that for you. But you're the writer. Meanwhile, while volunteering at Bellevue, Laura Jean and John Ambrose grew closer, discovering old decorations and organizing a star ball together. As their bond strengthened, John Ambrose began to show signs of developing feelings for her, unaware of her relationship with Peter. Later, Laura Jean and John Ambrose revisited a treehouse from their middle school days to unearth a time capsule they buried with friends. Laura Jean shared she buried a bracelet while Jen claimed she didn't contribute to the time capsule. Peter's jealousy toward John Ambrose escalated, prompting him to reveal his relationship with Laura Jean. I think I can handle helping my girlfriend clean up. The revelation led to a heated argument between Laura Jean and Peter. 
Why didn't you tell McLaren that you and I are together? Well, I wanted to. I tried to. There just was never a good time. There's usually not, when you're flirting. We're not flirting. And inviting your ex-girlfriend to your current girlfriend's party? I did not invite her. Like, officially. I might have just mentioned it. The following day, Laura Jean extended an apology to John Ambrose for not disclosing her relationship with Peter. It's okay. Laura Jean, I was just embarrassed. Because I read it all wrong. You know how you call me John Ambrose? Everyone calls you that. It's because of you. Before sixth grade, pretty much everybody called me John. And then I met you, and you called me John Ambrose and said how it was cool that we both went by our first and middle names. I didn't want to correct you, I liked how we had something in common. So I started telling people to call me John Ambrose. Days later, she dressed up for Peter's game, anticipating their meeting. However, Chris unexpectedly showed her a photo of Peter and Jen, sparking Laura Jean's confrontation with Peter. Were you with Jen today? Yes. Here we go again. Listen, she was upset because there's some things happening with her mom and her dad and she just wanted to talk to someone who understands. That's it. That's it? Peter, that is everything. She is trying to prove that no matter what is going on in your life, when she calls, you come running. And when push comes to shove, you pick her, you pick her every single time. I pick you. Laura Jean, when there was an actual choice, I pick you. During their conversation, Laura Jean discovered that Peter had never ceased communication with Jen and had intentions of reconciling with her during their ski trip. I said I was going to bed. And Jen knew exactly where you were. How did she know? You were waiting at the hot tub for her, weren't you? You and I weren't, like, really together yet. And that's why she took the video. And if I hadn't come down to find you, you and Jen would be together, and you and I would have never happened. Maybe that's how it should be. Despite Peter's attempts to postpone the discussion due to his game, Laura Jean, feeling deeply hurt, ended their relationship. Eventually, Laura Jean and Jen met at the treehouse. I guess you know Peter and I broke up. Part of the reason was because when he was with me, I always thought he was thinking about you. And that I would never be good enough. I was convinced that he was never really gonna get over you. And then I realized that the person who couldn't get over you was me. You probably don't remember this, but I put this in the time capsule because it's our friendship bracelet. Jen disclosed that Peter had been offering her support amid her parents' separation, as he had undergone a similar experience. She also reassured Laura Jean of Peter's feelings for her and revealed her feelings of embarrassment for not admitting to placing a friendship bracelet identical to Laura Jean's in the time capsule. I hid this over there because I didn't want you to know that I put the same thing in. Reflecting on her emotions, Laura Jean realized her own preoccupation with Jen and reconciled with her. There's a Korean word my grandma taught me. It's called Jung. It's the connection between two people that can't be severed. Even when love turns to hate, you will always have tenderness in your heart for them. Jen and I have Jung. Part of us will always be tied to one another. Later, Stormy provided Laura Jean with a dress and a makeover for the retirees' ball. 
John Ambrose waited for Laura Jean downstairs and was amazed by her. Later, Laura Jean shared a dance with John Ambrose. It seems as though they want us to dance. As volunteers, I think we should give the people what they want. We're finally dancing. I wanted to ask you to the sixth grade dance. I actually went to your house. I gathered up a whole bunch of sticks, and I arranged them in the letters D-A-N-C-E, with a little question mark at the end. Right outside your window. And then your dad came home. I'm pretty sure he thought that I was cleaning people's yards. So he gave me ten bucks, and I just, I got super nervous. So I went home. Laura Jean told John Ambrose about the end of her relationship with Peter. However, upon sharing a kiss with John Ambrose, Laura Jean recognized her true feelings for Peter and apologized to John Ambrose. Laura Jean later found comfort in talking to Stormy. Sometimes you have to kiss the wrong man to know what's right. I have. More times than a lady should admit. But what if it's too late? I mean, Peter and I, we broke up. Then unbreak it. If that's what you want. Rushing outside, she was pleasantly surprised to find Peter waiting for her. You said you didn't like driving in the snow, right? Break my heart, Covey. Break my heart into a thousand pieces. Do whatever you want. I love you. I love you too. They shared a kiss and reaffirmed their love for each other, ultimately reconciling their relationship. When you light a lantern and send it into the sky, you're supposed to make a wish. I thought I wanted a promise that Peter and I would never hurt each other. I wanted something that doesn't exist. I wanted happily ever after. But I know now that I don't want a love in half measure. I want it all. And to have it all, we have to risk it all. If I could do it over, I wouldn't change a thing. Because everything that's happened has brought us here. This is our story. And we're still at the beginning. To all the boys PS. I Still Love You is a delightful sequel to the 2018 romantic comedy To All the Boys I've Loved Before, based on the novels by Jenny Han. Directed by Michael Fimignari, this film continues the story of Lara Jean Covey, played by the charming Lana Condor, as she navigates the complexities of love and relationships. The movie picks up where the first one left off, with Lara Jean and Peter Kavinsky, portrayed by the charismatic Noah Centineo, officially becoming a couple. However, their newfound romance is put to the test when one of Lara Jean's old crushes, John Ambrose McLaren, played by the endearing Jordan Fisher, resurfaces and stirs up old feelings. The film beautifully explores themes of love, friendship, and self-discovery as Lara Jean navigates her feelings for both Peter and John Ambrose. Lana Condor delivers a heartfelt performance, portraying Lara Jean's inner conflicts and vulnerabilities with authenticity and charm. Noah Centineo continues to shine as Peter Kavinsky, bringing his trademark charisma and warmth to the character. The addition of John Ambrose McLaren adds an intriguing dynamic to the story, and Jordan Fisher brings a refreshing energy to the role. The chemistry between the characters is palpable, and their interactions are filled with genuine emotion and humor. Visually, the film is a treat, with vibrant cinematography and a lively soundtrack that captures the spirit of young love. The costumes and set designs are also noteworthy, adding to the film's overall charm and aesthetic appeal. Overall, to all the boys P.S. I Still Love You is a heartwarming and entertaining romantic comedy that will resonate with audiences of all ages. 
With its engaging storyline, relatable characters, and heartfelt performances, it is a worthy sequel that successfully continues the journey of Lara Jean Covey and her quest for love and self-discovery. Thank you for watching our movie synopsis. Be sure to click the subscribe, like, and notification bell to receive reminders of our next movie synopsis here on Bento's Storybox. See you next time, or at the movies.